thanks for coming along uh, tonight. Oh, sorry. No, it's today where you are. Uh, so it's uh, tonight here. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming along. My name is uh, Anthony Mullins, and I'm speaking to you from Mianjin, uh, which is the Indigenous name for Brisbane here in Australia. And I'm a professional uh, screenwriter and part-time educator, and I'm affiliated with Griffith Film School. Uh, where I'm on their industry advisory council and where I completed my, my, my doctorate some years ago. And what I'll be talking about today is how I use the concept of character arcs when working with screenwriting students. Uh, now, uh, as many of you, you know, probably already know, I'm a bit obsessed uh, with the concept of character arcs, uh, so much so that I wrote a book about the subject, uh, which is steadily being discovered internationally. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to announce that there will be a South Korean version of it uh, next year, which is super exciting. Uh, I've also written about character arcs uh, in an article last year for the Journal of Screenwriting, um, the information of which is just at the bottom of the screen there. So my interest in, in character arcs was prompted in my early career uh, by a frustration with the rigidity of screenwriting formulas like the three-act structure and in particular the hero's journey which I found they were rarely able to describe the sorts of film and tv projects uh, I watched uh, and I was also working on and this was particularly the case in my work in television uh, where a long-running tv series is it's never broken up into three neat acts as demanded by the three-act structure and where the large, you know, ensemble cast often featured, you know, many lead characters who absolutely refused to go through the, the sorts of emotional transformations demanded by the hero's journey. So this, it just didn't sort of compute for me how the, these things were useful in my TV work. When I was teaching, I was also very frustrated by how these formulas seemed to frequently stifle or distort the stories of the students who uh, I was sometimes working with. And it was it was actually really quite painful to watch them tie themselves in knots, trying to fit their ideas to the rigid demands of these formulas um, to the point where it I often just saw the students, their, their work just be drained of all the authenticity and originality and their, even their motivation to even write the thing as they tried to fit these things into the formulas. So uh, looking for a solution, uh, I turned to television where I'd noticed that character arcs were frequently used to map out long season and series arcs. And I wondered if this might be a more flexible approach, which could describe stories that you know didn't neatly break up into three neat acts. Uh, and I wondered if this approach could deal with characters who refused to change as well, because that's what I was dealing with quite a lot in television. So um, unfortunately, when I started to play around with this idea, um, the, the, the the definition of a character arc, even in the TV industry and academic circles and even instructional books, uh, it was not particularly well defined. And I talk a lot about this in the, uh, in the article for the Journal of Screenwriting. Um, people would frequently talk about emotional transformation uh, or they talk about the beats of the character's journey, uh, of the obstacles that they faced or the changes they underwent, but it was rarely defined much beyond those terms. Uh, so I decided to try and describe what I thought might be the essential moving parts of a character arc and how they interacted to shape a character's story. Uh, and my hope was to create a set of tools that would allow students and professionals alike to more precisely describe what was happening in the stories that they loved, uh, why they thought they worked and how they could take these lessons and apply them to their own work. So today what I'll, I'll briefly introduce what I think are the essential moving parts of a character arc and how these tools and the narrative landscape they've available to them and to develop their own unique and authentic storytelling voice. And I, I firmly believe that a fuller understanding of character arcs um, and how they work, work, it offers a chance to tell the story that you want to tell rather than someone else's idea of what a story is. So let's uh, 
let's start with uh, the basic definition of a character arc uh, that I use in the hero's journey. And uh, then I'll walk you through how I think they work. So the basic way I describe a, a character arc in the book is it's the emotional shape of, of the story. And so what I mean by that uh, is that at an, emotion, at an emotional level, where does the character start? What conflicts do they face? Where do they end up? In particular, as you'll see, I'm, I'm really, really interested in, in the emotional progression of the character's choices. Are the character's choices not only intriguing and interesting, uh, but do they make sense emotionally? Not necessarily you know, logically, because people are not logical. They frequently make illogical and, and re do really irrational things. But rather, do the character's choices feel emotionally true and authentic you know, to the character we've been following? And I'll expand on this definition once we take a closer look at how character arcs work. And to do that, we'll, we'll break it up into two parts. So we'll, we'll look at character and arc. And we'll, we'll start with character. Firstly, um, using a really very, very common writing technique that I'm sure you've all used before, I encourage students to think of the character as the relationship between you know, the character's internal world and their external world. Uh, so it's the interaction between those two things. So the character's external world uh, includes all the physical and tangible parts of their world, their family, their friends, their colleagues, their career, their neighbourhood, where they live, uh, its cultural and physical uh, environment, all of those sorts of things, all of the tangible things. The character's internal world uh, includes their all the, all the intangible things, basically. So their hopes and dreams and beliefs and memories and ambitions, all the intangible things that make up the character's inner world. So at the beginning of the story, those two worlds just tracking along just fine in parallel to each other. The arc of the character is the interaction between their internal and external worlds over the course of the story. So at the beginning of the story, the internal and external worlds of the of the protagonist, they, they move along uh, yeah, in parallel. Uh, that is until a major change comes along and sends their external world off in a new direction, creating a gap uh, between their unchanged inner world and their external world. And what this does is it creates conflict, which grows until eventually the character is forced to make a choice, an internal choice to address the problem. Now, essentially, that that's kind of it. That's These are all the bits of a character arc that I, uh, that, 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 you know, help describe what I think are the moving parts of a character arc. So these five elements are the essential moving parts of a character arc. It's the unfolding interaction of external change, conflict, and internal choice over the course of the story that creates the character's arc. And this can be visually represented to really quite good effect uh, to reveal the unique shape of each particular arc that uh, that a writer has put together and how the character's choices shape that arc. So, for example, um, in a hero's journey style arc, the character, uh, and you'll uh, you, you recognise this straight away, the character experiences a series of external changes which creates conflict and it forces them to make a series of internal choices, some of which are very unusual for the character, indicating... Because these, characters, uh, because these choices are unusual, it indicates that they're going through some sort of emotional change. Something is changing for them on the inside. Their beliefs and values are changing. As a result of this emotional change in a hero's journey style arc, the character is able to pull their internal and external worlds back together, uh, thus overcoming the conflict and resolving the story in an optimistic way. So that's, that's kind of how a, a hero's journey works. It's because the character could change that things worked out well for them. So as a result, a pure what I argue is a pure hero's journey is always a story about a changed character with an optimistic arc. Because they could change, things worked out well for them. That's a hero's journey, in essence. Uh, to illustrate this, here's 
you know, Star Wars. And this is a film that started the whole discussion of the hero's journey in the film world. And as you can see, uh, as Luke Skywalker's external world keeps changing, he's forced to make a series of unfamiliar internal choices. So leaving his home or you know, helping the Rebel Alliance, saving Princess Leia, and eventually using the Force. And each major internal choice marks a gradual change in Luke until he's finally able to destroy his enemies and resolve the conflict. He's able to pull his external world and internal world back together into some sort of balance. But of course, not all arcs have an optimistic shape like Luke's here. Here's uh, the social network where the fictionalized version of Mark Zuckerberg, he, he doesn't really change until the very end of the story. And uh, when he does, it's too late to save any of his relationships. He's super rich, but he's utterly friendless. And as a result, he's what I would call a change character with an, with an ambivalent arc. It's not all bad for Mark Zuckerberg, but there's still a fair bit of bad in there for him. Um, and this is The Godfather. This is uh, where, you know, Michael's unusual uh, internal choices, they only increase the conflict in his life throughout the story. The conflict just keeps on growing and growing and growing as he's dragged into a spiral of violence that his father desperately wanted him to avoid. And so the way I interpret this arc is it's about a change character with a pessimistic arc. Michael couldn't make the choices that would reduce the conflict in his life and he's worse off at the end. But of course, you know, as, as I was talking about before, there are characters who don't change. So what do their arcs look like? Well, this is uh, this is Chief Brody from Jaws. And I talk, a, I do a quite a detailed breakdown of Jaws in the Journal of Screenwriting article. But in Jaws, uh, Chief Brody's internal choices are consistently cautious and level-headed as he tries to deal with not only a killer shark, but a whole bunch of really, really reckless people around him who keep making terrible choices. And he just stays cautious and level-headed the whole way. And it's because of this cautiousness uh, and that he's able to beat the shark eventually and and you know and save the day. And so I I classify him as a he's a constant character because he his, his internal values and beliefs and desires don't change. But uh, it's because of that, it's because of its steadfastness that things work out optimistically for him. So he's a a constant character with an optimistic arc. Um, and then. This is another example of a constant character. This one's a bit different, though. This is Cassie from Promising Young Woman. And in Promising Young Woman, Cassie is tempted to move on from the tragic death of her friend. And again and again, she's tempted to just move on. Everyone wants her to move on. Uh, but eventually, she decides not to move on. She decides to rededicate herself to seeking revenge for her friend's death. And she succeeds. She gets the revenge she always wanted but she ends up paying a heavy price. So, you know, she's a constant character. She sticks to uh, her essential values and beliefs, but she pays a heavy price for doing that. And finally, this last example is uh, Sam from Sweet Country, which is a magnificent Australian Western uh, from a few years ago that uh, went around the world quite well. I, I know a lot of people who have seen it, but... It's, it's essentially about an Indigenous man who was charged with murder and who reluctantly uh, chooses to face a white court only to be ultimately denied justice, as he always expected. He knew this court was not going to uh, deliver him justice and he kept saying that was the case and, and yeah, he tried to escape it at some point, but he, eventually he was forced to face it and it does exactly what he expected. Things. Uh, and so uh, his situation uh, I describe as a constant character with a pessimistic arc. He sticks to his values, but things don't work out for him. So as you can see from the, the different shapes from these that these stories create, thinking about character arcs in this way, um, it dramatically widens the range of stories that can be analysed for their inequalities. Uh, easily taking in everything from inspiring tales of transformation and triumph to tragedies of powers, powerlessness and despair and everything in between. 
Similarly, in the examples we just saw, the number of act breaks created by the character's arc makes clear we're not locked into three acts. If we assume an act break is a significant external change, like so, so a turn in the story or an escalation in the conflict, and it's followed by a significant internal choice by the protagonist to deal with the situation, then Star Wars, The Godfather, Jaws, and Promising Young Woman, I, I count four acts in those stories. The Social Network, I would count five, while Sweet Country only has three. Well, it's the only one with three. Um, so in other words, stories, each story has its own unique sh shape and act structure, which is created by the character's arc. So building on the examples above and expanding on the basic version I presented at the beginning, we we can get this uh, this more precise definition of a character arc. So, and this is what I wrote up in the in the journal. So uh, a character arc is the particular emotional shape of a story created by the character's internal choices in response to external change and conflict. Um, now, my aim with this more precise definition was uh, so that it could specifically, so that it could, the definition could accommodate constant characters. So you'll notice here, I'm not talking about emotional change. I'm just saying these are the elements uh, that create a, a character arc, whereas normally what people talk about when they talk about a character arc is emotional change. I wanted to try and extract that, but still be able to describe a character arc. Now, my reason for doing this uh, because, is because most definitions place a really heavy emphasis on uh, emotional transformation, which it, it ends up excluding a lot of commercially and critically acclaimed films, such as Promising Young, Young Woman, uh, as well as you know a lot of the other films I, I just listed then. And when these films weren't, you know, looking around at the sort of analysis that was happening, when these films weren't completely being ignored in discussions about character arcs, there were other times when the films were being dismissed as simplistic or lacking complexity because the character or the protagonist didn't change, which is certainly not the case in the range of case studies that I researched for Beyond the Hero's Journey. Um, you know, Promising Young Woman is a great example of that. I even found cases uh, such as Jaws, for example, where the, the analysis people were undertaking, that they would go to these enormously convoluted lengths to argue that while it didn't look like the protagonist changed, they actually did emotionally change. And they would go to great lengths to try and prove this rather than entertain the possibility that the character was just a constant character, that they didn't change. And again, I'm, I blame the hero's journey for this sort of blinkeredness. Uh, rather than seeing the film for what it was, sometimes the analysis was trying to squeeze it into a box it just didn't fit into. Um, now, one of the most interesting outcomes of this approach that I've found is the potential to identify a range of tonal qualities associated with the unique character arc of a story, which in turn can hint at the, the, the broad cultural and, and creative So, you know, uh, these are a different story about the world and hint at the storyteller might see things. So, for example, a strict hero's journey invariably presents a change character with an optimistic arc, something like Star Wars. And so in a story like that, the key problem to be overcome is the hero's internal flaw. And, and it must be recognised and corrected before the conflict in the story can be resolved. Now, that all might sound fine if the hero is a white Western male who's been raised in a culture that consciously and unconsciously privileges white male perspectives above all else. But if the hero of the story is a woman or black or brown or Asian or disabled or part of the LGBTQIA plus community, then the idea that the central problem is somehow the internal world of the protagonist this idea just ends up sounding pretty hollow to audiences and writers from those backgrounds. Oftentimes, the point of a story that pushes against a hero's journey style character arc is the idea that the protagonist doesn't need to change, 
The prejudiced world around them needs to change. That's the point of those stories. These are the sorts of arcs that get lost in story discussions that continue to be dominated by the hero's journey. You know, and these, as I argue, these stories are out there and they're commercially and critically successful, but many of the narrative tools that we've been using uh, fail to adequately describe them. Um, for example, here are three recent and uh, fairly quite acclaimed films uh, that I've seen recently uh, where I would describe that uh, the protagonists in these films are constant characters. So um, how to blow up a pipeline in particular is super interesting because from what I can tell, uh, it's uh, an ensemble of constant characters. I think there's about seven characters. And uh, from my from my analysis, none of them change. They know what they want and they go and do it and they don't change course. Um, so, you know, once you know what you're looking for, constant characters are everywhere. Um, in fact, uh, it's it's a little bit ironic, um, you know, that we can see the hero's journey sitting up there in the corner, you know, with their changed characters and optimistic arcs, when there's all this other storytelling landscape out there to be explored, where things are much more nuanced, much more bittersweet, more tragic, more dogged, more tough, more courageous, you know, all these other qualities that the hero's journey could be seeking out. So, you know, for all of its talk of traveling to special worlds, it's kind of ironic that the hero's journey seems to be stuck in a fairly pedestrian corner, corner of the storytelling landscape. And, and to me, it feels like the hero's journey needs to go out and have a bit of a hero's journey of its own and kind of shake things up a little bit. Um, I'd like to just finish off uh, in the next five minutes or so uh, by describing what I've found to be one of the best techniques for introducing uh, students to character arcs, and that is case studies. Um, now, for those of you who have read Beyond the Hero's Journey already, you'll know that I love a case study. Uh, the book contains 30 of them from a wide variety of feature films uh, where I walk readers through the stories step by step and discuss how the character's arc shapes their structure. Uh, so the case studies uh, provide, the, the way I see it is, case studies are great because they provide students with a way of seeing in action how the essential elements of character arcs, so you know, external change, conflict, internal choice, how they interact across the whole story and in turn hint at the deeper themes and perspectives that the filmmaker might be reaching for. Um, now, I know what you're thinking. Case studies can be extremely time consuming, especially if you're analyzing a whole feature film. However, case studies don't have to be a whole feature film. In fact, in quite a few of my workshops, uh, I, I usually use a five minute episode of the super popular Australian TV show, Bluey, uh, to introduce the elements of character arcs to the students. Um, I think it's Bluey here. Um, and invariably, Within the first 20 minutes of a workshop, I can introduce students to those key elements of character arcs. They can watch a Bluey episode and straight after it, straight after it, confidently identify the key components of Bluey's character arc across the episode. And it's a really, really fun exercise, uh, which gives students a lot of confidence that, you know, with the right tools, they can easily see what a character arc looks like and how it's constructed. And the particular episode of Bluey that I use is called The Beach, and it's adorable. Uh, so if, if you want to if you want to check it out, uh, it's probably on iTunes somewhere. Download it, have a look at it. The character arc in it is just so clear. Uh, and yeah, have, have a think about how, how Bluey's character arc plays out in that episode. In fact, a lot of the episodes of Bluey are they're beautifully constructed stories. Um, they're so layered. There's so much going on in them. Uh, supreme, uh, Joe Brum, the creator of, of the show, is just a supreme writer. Um, one of the other favourite exercises I like to do when I'm doing longer courses is to have students do a presentation called Arc of the Week. Uh, and in this exercise, one student nominates a film they, that they want to analyse for its character arc. Uh, it's usually a film that they really, really love. Um, they know it very well. They love it intimately. 
And everyone commits to watching that film during the week. Uh, but the, the volunteer student actually has to analyze the thing. They've got to give a little talk. So the next week in class, they do a short 15 minute presentation and the student walks everyone through what they think is the character's arc, identifying the external and internal traits of the character, as well as the key external changes, conflicts and internal choices that shape the story. And from there, we discuss and debate it. And uh, it's a lot of fun for students. Uh, and the students take away a lot of insights into character design and development, as well as debating the effectiveness or otherwise of a range of different structures as they hear more and more arcs. And they have, they have opinions about whether or not this arc really does serve the story uh, adequately. Uh, and I've been really, really encouraged by how quickly and easily students are able to learn the basics of character arcs, the basic elements, and how they apply them to a film that they know and love. However, I'm not surprised that far fewer students are, are able to actually visually map out the character arcs diagrammatically. Now, while it's an effective way to visually represent or visualize a, a character arc, Producing these diagrams is not for everyone. And I usually discourage people from trying it, even if they find it daunting in even the slightest way. I just go, look, if it's you don't have to draw a diagram, uh, because you know they they're hard to draw. Um, but in terms of the essential elements, it's easy for the students to break that down and think about it. And it's it's more than enough for the students to be able to discuss and debate the key changes that the character experiences and the big choices that they make to, to give them an insight into how, how, how the character, how the character arcs shape out and how the story's shaped. Um, another exercise uh, that I like to give students uh, is called five films. Uh, and this is where I ask students to identify five films that made them want to be a writer. And I then ask them in their own time to watch those films again and try and identify any pattern in the sorts of character arcs they contain. Because there can be lots of different ways, you know, a character arc plays out as we've seen. So are they all optimistic arcs or are they always change characters or uh, or are all are they are there, are there quite a few constant characters in there? Or do the films contain a strong ambivalent or pessimistic quality? You know, what is it about the the way these arcs play out? And is there a pattern to it? And by doing this, the character, the, the students are getting a sense of the types of arcs that they're drawn to and how this might influence the sorts of projects they should be putting their energies into as they try and develop their own storytelling voice. So, you know, the, the goal here is for them to figure out why am I drawn to those sorts of stories? You know, what is what is what is it about that? Um once the students have seen and participated in a few of these case studies, I find that they're more than capable of asking the same questions of their own work as they try and figure out what sort of story they're trying to make. Um, and I think one of the one of the strengths of this approach to character arcs is that it's easy to understand and apply. I, I spent a lot of time experimenting with simple self-explanatory and accessible terms like choice, change, conflict, words that don't require specialist knowledge. Um, and I also tried to choose concepts that didn't reinvent the wheel and instead just built on existing, you know, industry concepts um, so that, you know, you don't have to create a whole new language. It's kind of building on what's already there. So, you know, when we're talking about a character's choice, it's essentially the same thing as a goal or an objective or a need that, you know, we've heard all sorts of times, read them all in books, except you know, talking about a character's choice doesn't need much explanation. It's just like, what did the character choose to do? What does that tell you about them? It's a simple concept to get, and it's flexible because it can be applied to all sorts of stories. Um, when we talk about external change, it's the same thing as a as a turning point or a plot point uh, or an act break, but it doesn't require that sort of technical terminology. It's just like, what changes around the character? What What happens? Um, so the heart of this approach um, to character arcs is a desire to help writers find the shape of the story that they're trying to tell rather than force their story into someone, else, someone else's shape like the three-act structure or the hero's journey. The only 
I feel I, I feel strongly about this that the only shape the writer needs to be focused on is the one that intrigues them, that keeps them awake at night, wondering about it, and the one that captures the themes they want to explore and the worldview that they think is authentic and true. Along the way, sure, they can think about the market and the audience, and they can research case studies of successful stories similar to theirs and try and learn from them. But mostly it's about finding the characters the student wants to tell a story about and discovering the arcs that those characters were destined to have. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's character arcs for me. And uh, I've... I've just indicated a few uh, exercises there that that I approach, um, but I might just throw to the floor now. And so, if anyone has any questions, I'll take this off full screen so I can see you all again. Hang on. Um, First 